Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on congruence. Our objective is to write congruent statements for, well, congruent figures. Our real-world link is on crafts. Lauren is creating a quilt using the geometric pattern shown. She wants to make sure that all of the triangles in the pattern are the same shape and size. So, what would, you, what would Lauren need to do to show the two triangles are congruent? Well, I think she would need to measure the sides and angles of each triangle and compare. And if you want to find out if they're congruent or not, you can always measure the sides and angles and simply compare. Now complete the list of the parts of triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Then draw lines between the corresponding parts of the triangle. Well, we have our line segment CB, which is right here, and BA already listed. So what are we missing is, well, CA. And then we have angle BAC, which is right here. Angle ABC is right here. So we're missing this angle here, which we're going to call just angle C. Now what about the other? Well, we're given line segment ED, which is right here. So we need to list this line segment and this line segment. So those are segment FD and segment FE. And when it comes to the angles, we're given angle EDF, which is EDF right there. So we need to list angle DEF, which is right here. So, so far we have DEF and EDF. So we need to get this angle here, which we're simply going to call angle F. Now, let's try to match. Let's match CB with FE. As CB is here and FE is there, those are corresponding parts. Then we can also match CA with FD as we have CA and FD. And then that leaves us with BA and ED, which, if you remember from Pythagorean theorem and properties of right triangles, BA and ED are your hypotenuses, and so those are corresponding parts there. Well, let's start with the right angles. Angle C and angle F are corresponding which leaves us with angle BAC corresponding with EDF, so BAC with EDF, and then ABC with DEF. Now in this lesson, we're going to practice writing these congruent statements and matching corresponding sides to each other. Now, suppose you cut out the two triangles and laid one on top of the other so the parts of the same measures were matched up. What is true about the triangles? Well, simply, they are congruent. Now, our definition of corresponding parts of congruent figures, if two figures are congruent, the corresponding sides are congruent and the corresponding angles are congruent. And to indicate this, we have the statement the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Again, the triangle ABC is congruent to the equal with a little squiggly on top, triangle DEF. And for congruence, to indicate that sides are congruent, an equal number of tick marks is shown on corresponding sides. So the one tick mark matches the one tick mark here, so AB is congruent to DE. To show that the angles are congruent, an equal number of arcs is drawn on the corresponding angle. So angle D with one arc is corresponding and congruent to angle A. Angle C with the two is congruent to angle F 
with the two. So in the figure below, the two triangles are congruent because triangle DEF is the image of triangle ABC reflected over line M. The notation triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF is red. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. See, I read it without even thinking about it. Now, the parts of congruent figures that match or correspond are called corresponding parts. Now, in this image here, the parts aren't already labeled. So let's take this chance to see how that labeling comes about. When we have triangle ABC being congruent to triangle DEF, you can actually use that order to help you. So that when you look at the angles, A is the first listed, then D. So we can say, all right, angle A corresponds with angle D. Now, angle B and E are in the middle, and those both happen to be right angles, and so those are also corresponding and congruent. And now with C, it's the last one, as is F, so we'll have the three arc marks for C and F, saying that those are congruent. And actually, in your book, it might just be two arc marks, but we'll just fix that and make that two. With the sides, we have AB being first, and then we have DE, and so we have one tick mark for each of those, and those are corresponding and congruent. Then we have BC and EF. Well, BC and EF, two tick marks there. And then lastly, you're like, wait, what about AC and DF? Well, that kind of wraps around if you kind of go from C back to A and F back to D. So one, two, three, one, two, three, those are corresponding and congruent. The parts of congruent figures that match or correspond are called corresponding parts. Write congruent statements comparing the corresponding parts in the congruent triangles shown. So we're going to use the matching arcs and tick marks to identify the corresponding parts. So we have angle J congruent to angle G. Well, J and G both have one arc mark. Angle L is congruent to angle I. As you see, L has two tick marks and I also has, I'm sorry, two arc marks, not tick marks. And then angle K is congruent to angle H as both have the three arc marks. Then when we come for the corresponding sides, JK is congruent to GH because JK has the one tick mark and GH has the one tick mark. KL is congruent to HI as KL has three tick marks and HI high has three tick marks. And then LH is congruent to IG as LJ has two and IG also has two. And now when it comes time to try this out on our own, let's go with the corresponding angles first. Well, let's just start with the one with the one tick or one arc mark, and that would be A and M. So angle A is going to be congruent, it's equal with the squiggly to angle M. Then the one with two tick marks is angle B is congruent to the other one with two tick marks, which is angle N. And now we have two sets of right angles, and that gets a little bit tricky. But for this, if we look at angle N, and there's two tick marks, or two arc marks, if we look directly across, we get angle P. Well, then if we go to angle B, and we have the two arc marks, and we go directly down and across, we have angle S. So that's a way to figure out, when these are both right angles, that S and P are congruent to each other. So angle S is congruent to angle P. And then lastly, well, we only have one other option, but if we look opposite of angle A, that's angle K, the one arc mark down to K, and then the one arc mark from M goes down to Q, or O. So O is going to be congruent with Okay, now what about our corresponding sides?
This one's a little more straightforward. We can just go right through it. The one tick mark with AS is going to be congruent. Now, we do need to pay a little bit of attention. AS goes from the one arc mark down to the right angle. So we want to make sure, even though this has one mark at MP, that we match it. So AS went from the one arc to the right angle, so we have the one tick mark. So we need to go from the one arc down to the right angle to call this segment MP. Then, our two, we have angle, or segment KS, is going to be congruent. Now, K is below the two mark. K is below that. And we know it's going to be congruent to PO or OP. And the one below the two is O. So we're going to match that as OP. Then the three, let's just call it BK, is going to be congruent with, and that goes from the two down to the right. So the one that goes from two down to the right that has three tick marks is NO. And then for the fourth, we have MN. And that goes from the one arc mark down to the two arc marks. So one arc mark down to two arc marks. That has the four tick marks is AB. In example two, we need to be able to write congruent statements and identify transformations. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Write congruent statements comparing the corresponding parts, then determine the, which transformations map triangle ABC on to triangle XYZ. So our first step is to analyze the figures to determine which angles and sides of the figures correspond. Well, we have A corresponding with X and B corresponding with Y and C corresponding with Z. And again, a little shortcut here. A is the first, X is the first, B is the second, Y is the second, C is the third, Z is the third, and most of the time that will work as you try to write out your corresponding angles. As for the corresponding sides, we have segment AB congruent to XY. We have segment BC congruent to YZ. And we have segment CA congruent to segment ZX. In step two, we'll determine any changes in the orientation of the triangles. Now, the orientation is reversed so that you need at least one transformation to be a reflection. So if you reflect it over the y-axis, then translate it two units down, it coincides with triangle x, y, z. Now can we do this ourselves? Parallelogram w, x, y, z is congruent to parallelogram k, l, m, n. Write congruent statements comparing the corresponding parts, then determine which transformation maps or transformations map parallelogram WXYZ on to parallelogram KLMN. Well, if we start with our angles, angle W is going to be congruent to angle K. Angle X is going to be congruent to angle L. Angle Y is going to be congruent to angle M. And angle Z is going to be congruent to angle N. Now notice, I went in the same order here. WXYZ, WXYZ, KLMN, KLMN. So when we write congruent statements like WXYZ is congruent to KLMN, you can use that to help you match your angles. And you can also use it to help you match your sides. If we start with the first two letters, WX, line segment WX is going to be congruent to the first two letters of the other parallelogram, which is KL. And then we can say, all right, the next two, line segment XY is going to be congruent to line segment LM. So, so far we've said, okay, WX, KL, and XY, LM. And now we can take YZ with MN. So line segment YZ is going to be congruent to line segment M, 
n. And then for our last one, it kind of just wraps around. We're going to have segment ZW congruent to NK. So line segment ZW is going to be congruent to line segment NK. And those are our congruence statements for our corresponding sides. Now step two is to determine which transformations map tri or parallelogram WXYZ onto parallelogram KLMN. What happens if I reflect WXYZ over the x-axis? Well, if I do that, the new Z is there. The new W is here. The new X is there, or X prime. And Y prime ends up right there. And now we have matching orientation. So, so far I've reflect W, X, Y, Z over X axis. That was the first thing I did. And now if I simply translate from here, one, two, three, four, five units to the left, it will map. So translate W, X, Y, Z prime, five units left, we can say that it will coincide with M or K L M N. Now, finding missing measures. You can use properties of congruent figures to find the missing measures of angles and sides in a figure. And congruent angles have the same measures and congruent sides have equal length. So Miley is using a brace to support a tabletop. In the figure, triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DFG. If measure of angle CEB equals 50 degrees, what is the measure of angle FGD? Well, B or CEB, which is this angle here, is 50 degrees. What is the measure of angle F? G, D, this angle here. Well, if we look at congruent statements, angle C, E, B is going to be the same thing as kind of like angle E, and that's the last one here. And angle F, G, D is really just angle G, which is kind of right here in our congruent statement, so they're congruent. So they're congruent and that means they have equal angle measures. So that's also 50 degrees. Now in the figure shown above, the length of line segment CE is two feet. Now if I just redraw this down here, we have CEB, and this is two feet. Then we have the other triangle here, which is GFD. Now, remember, triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DFG. And right now, we're saying that CE is 2, and we're looking for FG. Well, those are corresponding. So we could also say that that is 2. So our answer is 2 feet, since they are corresponding sides. That is it for our lesson on congruence. Good luck.